What is up, Need for Speed Racers? It is I, your wheel man, Alex Cornut. I'm here today with the viewer requested BMW i8 Roadster. It's actually a lot better than I remember when I first built it. I might have just put it in the wrong class when I was building it or was comparing it against just meta cars and I was really just searching for meta at the time. But after building it with Nil and putting stuff together, this really caught me off guard and it's really quite good. It is not going to set any record times by any means, you guys, but it's got a decent top speed. It's super stable. It doesn't get super, super rowdy on you and catch you off guard. Uh, it launches really hard and it uses the stock motor for the build. So overall, it's really not that expensive to get going once you own the car. It's really got all the moving parts for a really good pub stomper and the gameplay footage will show you guys that. It is a viewer request, meaning you guys asked for it, so drop a comment down below on what you want to see me build next. The crew and I will get together, and we'll put it together for you. Whatever comment gets the most likes will be that next build. It might not be the very next video, but it will be something that I put in the log, and I make sure that I get it out to you guys. Because at the end of the day, I'm here to serve you and bring you guys the best content that I can. So, let me know what you want to see. And while you're down there liking other comments and making your own comment, like the video and subscribe if you're not, because that really helps me out a bunch. Like legit, puts me in front of a lot of other people. And I think there's a huge portion of the Need for Speed community that doesn't know that my little channel exists and they need to. And if you, any of you guys have tried my builds, you know the game, like we out here and we're doing it right, we're doing it the best. So all of that being said, Copium Series running right now. We are in week two. We've got two days left. It ends tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Central Time, CST. We've got a lot of entries already. We're running the 370Z Nismo on Wild Thang, and it is a lot of fun. We've really been enjoying that. We've got a lot of guys that are submitting times. They're got, other guys are grinding them down. We've got some people that have not submitted before, so we've got some new faces there. A lot of guys that did it last week. And I know there's a handful of you guys wait until the last day to submit. So go ahead and get your times in there. You can send me a screenshot in Discord, put it in the channel. There's just dedicated like Copium Series submissions, or you can email it to me if you don't use Discord. Pretty much any way you can send it to me and I'll make sure we get you in. All we need is your game name, the car you drove, which is the 370Z Nismo, your time, and then it's got to show the track. So I've got phone like sideways angled pictures that have been submitted and it all works guys we make it we make it go for you so come and hang out come participate it is for new players it is for anybody that plays the game really i do a lot of different splits so i will group you up with somebody that is of a similar time that is in your play style your performance level so that way you're not getting grouped up with guys that are super fast uh, in comparison or whatever like you can be 25 seconds off pace and still win your split because the Copium series is designed to help new players and it is the only one like that. So I'm really happy to bring that to you. Let's dig into the build. This one's actually a lot of fun. For the engine that you use on this one, like I said, you guys, it is the stock motor. It is the 1.5 liter inline three, 369 brake horsepower when we start. It is the hybrid motor. It is the sport bronze engine. It is the fourth or fifth one over. One, two, three, four, five. Five motor. It being the stock, I usually am like, well, the stock motor is usually not the best one. So you guys will see, I've purchased the other ones in here. So I didn't do the Wankel because historically speaking, that car, that motor just doesn't do it. So I didn't bother with that. But the V6, the I4, I mean, I, I tried all those. And you guys will see that they've got less horsepower, uh, definitely a lot less torque. And they just didn't do it. And then you go look at the top speeds. It's like, oh, the inline three has got a higher top speed. It doesn't get there. Tested it. Um, yeah, that 3.2 liter I6 has even got a higher top speed, but it's got less horsepower. It doesn't do it. You guys will find that even though it has a higher top speed, it never, ever gets there. And so it just doesn't work. Uh, and that's the game stats kind of artificially inflating the, the values because the way the transmission and the gear ratios work with that engine pairing, it says, oh, it'll go this fast. If you drop it off a cliff, maybe. But I ran a lot of different testing with it and it just doesn't get there in a race format. So this motor combination that we've got with the stock motor, it, it really does just fine. It says it does 177. It'll do about 180 with redline tech. I would say like 178, 179, just full bore. And that's plenty fast for A+. You guys are not gonna get walked. It does just fine. 
For the parts, you're running Super Gold Induction. You're running Elite Platinum ECU. Sport Bronze Fuel System. Sport Bronze Exhaust. And Elite Platinum Roots Supercharger. Sport Bronze Nitrous. Elite Platinum Road Suspension. Silver Pro Brakes. Elite Platinum Grip Tires. Silver Pro Clutch. And the Sport Bronze Five Speed Transmission. You can do just a Sport Bronze Differential. You don't need to buy any of the higher tier ones because this gets you 100% uh, grip with just the Sport Bronze. My nitrous auxiliaries are nitrous drift and nitrous grip, so that way I can micro drift. You guys do whatever your play style suits. So if you find yourself drafting or you're you know kind of middle of the group on the playlist, you might use my nitrous draft. If there's races that you're doing specifically with cars that have lots of jumps, you might do my nitrous jump. But for the overall fastest that I can drive, I do nitrous drift and grip so we can micro drift and get the most out of our bonuses. For the handling, slide that slider 100% full Beyonce to the left, to the left. We out here. Steering sensitivity, two clicks high. That's my personal preference. You guys do whatever you like. The car felt really good. It's super stable. So you guys might even get away with turning it up a little more than that if you want. Downforce, you have to run it all the way high. That is the only place that will give you A plus 269. Every other location on this car with this setup is a 270 or a 271, so it puts you into S class. So all the way to the right, full downforce, 269. Traction control off and drift entry, I run brake tap. A lot of other guys run gas tap. Some guys are running both, so do whatever your style is for whatever you're playing, you guys. Overall, car's pretty good. The it's a hybrid, so it's got electric motors in it, and so I think that's where we're getting a lot of this torque. So it launches really, really good. You can launch in third or in fourth. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergy season. That's getting to me. You can really do either one. If you launch in third, you're going to use that plus all your NOS, and as soon as your NOS runs out, you're right at the top of third gear. You click into fourth, or you launch in fourth, and then you don't have to worry about the shift. So, either way, it's really pretty good in both. You'll see that in the gameplay. This is a pretty stable little car. It's it's sturdy. It's sturdy. You're you're not going to win against somebody that's in some of the Rosa builds because the Rosa is utterly dominant. But it is a pub stomper for sure. It gets it done, and if you guys are looking for the i8, this is the best version of the i8 that I can build for sure. It's good. I uh, it really like I say it really surprised me. I think I built it to S when I was experimenting with it earlier on in the game when I had it, and so revisiting it because you guys asked for it really kind of put it into a new light. And after a little bit of experimentation, trying different motors and combinations, we really came to something here that I think you guys are going to enjoy. So thank you so much for watching, supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate that. Drop a like on the comment you want to see for the build you want to see next. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're not. Come participate in Copium series. I will link that video at the end. It'll be one of the options you can select. And then also I'll link the manual transmission tutorial that I've got on there as well. So if you're learning to learn, if you are looking to learn manual, I got you set up. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right. We're about to try to get spicy in this I-8. It looks really good. That's about all it does, though. All right. Let's see what's up. Got a pre-shift with the five speed. I'm just going to go out and guess. Say third's probably about right. Third's a banger for show. Try to get a little micro drift there. That didn't happen. Get a nice long grip turn here. So now that we've got that, it gives us a three bar. I'm going to save the three bar and kind of milk it till we get to the very top of the turn and then Tron turn straight down. It's the fastest way around that corner for sure. Cut to the left. We ignore the checkpoint completely. Puts us right back onto the track. You want to run on the pavement. Uh, going to the left and going up and around is like way slower for sure. Slow down. We'll see if we can catch a micro drift here. 
give us the boost, bang it out in fourth gear, cut a straight line through the dirt, catch our next gear there, we're in fifth, slow down, downshift, downshift, boost out, it should have worse our grip turn there, use that to get us through fourth. You know, when I originally was building the car, I wasn't sure what to expect with the uh, little I in line three that's in it. And we're going to just hang a really tight Tron turn right there. Pretty good line. I was looking at the checkpoints and not even remembering that I need to turn really sharp there and cut our line off. All right. Sorry, I'm not standing up in the video, you guys. I just barely woke up. I'm drinking coffee. Like, woke up, grabbed the build, started working on it. Me and Nil were up fucking late last night, boys, working on some stuff for you guys. So, uh, lots more to come. And that is going to be a sub two on track day special. That is not an Omega Fast Time or anything like that. I would say this is definitely um, a little pub stomper. Like, it, the car's not bad. It doesn't feel underpowered. It feels geared okay. Um, we'll see what, what it does on the top end in the coming races. Mind you, we're running a guy in the Panorama Turbo, and that car is lackluster at all tiers. Um, and then our other buddy in the Dodge Charger RT, and we've already gone through that together, so you guys know the game there. But that's all right. Um, this car's got really great body kits. So, A-plus fish hook. Uh, you guys know the game here. That is a top speed track. It's one of the fastest overall, like, speed reaching tracks in the game. Um, I think the only other track where you might get going faster and have a lot of time to redline tech might be, like, rapid transit. Uh, and this is excluding all the S-plus tracks, because obviously those are a throwaway, you guys. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to see what the car really does here. I'm uh, kind of excited to show it to you. It's just to give you some perspective on what the i8 can do. I think with this configuration, um, it's not half bad. We launch in third, so I've already pre-shifted. And if you guys want, I got that manual transmission tutorial on the channel now. It's a lot different than what's out there. Um, a lot of people have given me very, very good feedback on it. They said that they, it helped them a lot. They're learning a lot from it. So um, if you're trying to learn manual transmission, you guys, that might be the place to go for it. So we're in fifth, we are crawling up. Now, we're not expecting to break any records in this car because we know out of the gate, like, the speed cars for A+, plus are all the Lord and Savior Testarossa. That's a meme on my Discord, you guys. We've got literal pictures of Testarossas, like, in the place of Jesus. <laughs> it's, it's nuts. Um, but outside of that, um, we know the Rosa will do like 213 in a straight line. Uh, that's not the build you would use for fish hook, but it, it'll go for it. We know that the ASAP Rocky car is quite fast. Um, I would say that this thing is appropriately powered for the gears, meaning um, it doesn't really have enough power for us to get on the top end and like red line tech, but it does have enough power to get you to its top speed. Um, it's just not really exceeding that. So we're going to get out on the road here and we're just going to bang it until we hit the rev limiter cool so it'll do about 180 you guys um 179 let's see if we can get it to actually hit 180 before we have to make our turn here yeah for a second you guys saw it there so i immediately just tapped the e-brake downshifted so we could be steady through here car's really stable very very planted um i'm really not unhappy with it at all originally when you guys were requesting the i8 i was like here we go because the first time I built it, I really was not happy with it. But, you know, nil, the lab, when we start really working on something and actually put some time into, well, it's not if we can make the car meta, we've got to make it playable for the people that are asking for it. And so when we start to set that as the baseline, um, we really are bringing you guys stuff that's pretty competent. And I would say that this is one of those builds. Like I say, you're not going to set any records in it, you guys, but it is very, very good. Um, very planted, micro drifting, no problem. Now, you guys will see there that I literally used the boost before I was out of the corner. So that way I would get the drift, then the grip, and then I kind of did it again. So we chained all of our boosts there. They were all two bars, but <clears throat> overall pretty good. Catch some near misses. 
There we go. There's 180. And 180 for A plus is real solid. Um, I thought I was gonna like this car a lot less than I actually do. This is one I'll probably keep in the garage. Um, as far as A plus cars go, there is a wide variety of selection. I think it's probably the most balanced class once you remove the RSR and the Testarossa. Um, so as long as you're not racing guys that are getting super try hard, there's a lot of really good cars in the class, and I think this is one of them. And for you guys, as um, I don't like to use the term casual players because I know that I've got some real like upper tier guys that watch the channel. Uh, but for, I would say, the general majority of Need for Speed players that like to watch my content and get stuff out of it, I think this will be a banger for you guys. Um, it definitely slots in better than a lot of the other cars we have in the class. I like it way better than the Austin Martin, ladies and gentlemen. Like, uh, <laughs> for sure, way better than the Austin Martin. And it looks wild. There's a lot of uh, body kit stuff you can do with it, as you can see there. Got that blue Coordinate Racing Crew livery on it. Factory record, I like this track. It's very technical. It's a lot of fun. Um, it, it's my favorite for sure. I've showed you the launches in third gear, um, and then we shift just as we're running out of nitrous. So let's try to launch in fourth just to see the difference there so you guys can see. Fourth isn't bad. We end our nitrous boost right as we're coming into the power of the gear. So... I would say that you guys could launch in third or fourth and probably not have a problem in this car. Um, I'd have to do a little more testing to decide which one I like the most. Super planted there, you guys. Like, I just boosted through, didn't break, didn't worry about anything, and just got a really good grip turn, and it didn't get rowdy on me at all. So, um, if you guys like really stable, solid cars, this is going to be the one. And you'll see, guys, I mean, we're walking our opponents, mind you. You know, their skill set and where they're at in the game, it's it's hard to judge. So, in a more sweaty lobby, this might not be as easy to run with. But, I would say that as far as pub stomping goes and just hanging out and racing with the buddies or coming and racing with the crew and hanging out, this is, this is a good one. Um, it's, like I say, I like the gearing. It's just perfect. I mean, it doesn't have so much power that you're sitting there bouncing off the rev limiter and you're needing to redline tech. It's kind of like... You just hold it full throttle and it'll get there eventually. Try to get a nice micro drift to the left here. Try to get that up to at least two bars. There it is, three bars, that'll work. Pretty solid. Overall, you guys, I think that if you are looking for the BMW i8, this is gonna be one that you do enjoy. Um, it. It doesn't feel sluggish anywhere. It just feels consistent through the gears. It handles really, really good. I really expected to kind of lose it back there when I was boosting through the corner. And it just, it does not slipping at all. It's very, very planted. Um, definitely one that caught me off guard. And I am more than happy to bring it to you guys. This is a pretty sweet little build. Um, kind of a diamond in the rough, so to speak. Like, not, not meta or nothing, but uh, definitely fast enough that you're like, shit, that's all right. That's a good little car. It's a banger. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.